and we're here at the ID Tech X show. Hi. Oh, hi. Yes, uh, my name is Alex, and I'm here with Alvac. Alvac is a Japanese corporation that is based uh, in Chigasaki, Japan, which is about 30, 40 miles uh, of Tokyo. So and our you do these kind of things at the company? Yeah, so the company, the core technology is in making vacuum, creating the vacuum, maintaining the vacuum, and how to utilize that environment for the position process. That is our core technology in a nutshell. Um, with the position of the materials that is used in the semiconductor applications for the display application, for advanced electronics application. This time in the ID techs, we have focused on the two major equipments that are mainly used for battery manufacturing. So we have one equipment which uses the row to row process. It's an evaporation type of uh, tool. Instead of having the lithium and copper foil being laminated together, we would deposit the lithium on top of the copper foil to make it a much higher efficiency, a much better performance, and a much uh, higher capacity uh, properties of the battery in a very high volume production. And then, on the other hand, we are also introducing, we are also having our, what we call the PVD tool, is a sputter tool, is a cluster cham uh, chamber tool where we have many different process and we make a solid state battery that can be utilized for very small form factor, very small IoT type of devices. And it's a safe battery because it's a solid state, so there's no electrolyte, there's no danger of catching fire or anything in a very safety material. How do you, how do you, which part of the solid state battery do you enable? We enable the manufacturing of the battery. We are not a battery manufacturer, but for the companies who are making the battery, we have a solution, a uh, high volume manufacturer tool that can be used on their production. Is it this one? This is the tool, yes. And you have like six chambers configuration. Each chamber is dedicated for one type of process. And, and this it, is for mass production or is it just for is prototyping? For mass, this is for mass production. And uh, so it's automated, this kind of like robotic? This is fully automated. Uh, the material would go inside the tool. Once it gets inside, it's fully automated. We have the robot that's transferred. It's all under vacuum. The whole process finishes. When it comes out, you have all the layers being deposited and can go for post-processing to make the battery. Uh, so does this have to do with vacuum? It's all under vacuum process. It's and all about it's vacuum. Go, once it goes inside, this entire environment here is under vacuum. How do you make vacuum? How does that work? You pump the air out, how does it work? Yes, um, what we have shown here is when the equipment is open, just for an easier visualization, but what you have here, this rolls, is where you would have the copper foil that you would be uh, attached here goes inside the chamber. The chambers then is sealed, obviously, and closed. You have the pumps that sits outside of the equipment, and the pumps, again, our core technology, how to make the vacuum, how to maintain the vacuum in a high quality, and then we create a vacuum environment inside that chamber. And this you've been doing for 60 years? Yes, the company has over 60 years. What was the point of doing, uh, what was a use case at 60 years ago for to do vacuum? Is it like this is, uh, So this is a very, this is maybe, uh, no. One of the uses of this technology for the vacuum, uh, right after the World War II, when we had actually a lot of the American military that was stationed in Japan, and one of the things that the Americans liked was orange juice. However, to transport orange juice to Japan, you would imagine to for all that volume and in the juice format, it would take a lot of cost. So one of the utilization, it's when it happens where people are very familiar with the tank, when you do the freeze dry. So you would take the juice of the orange, freeze dry, make it in a powder format. And then once you add the water, you're basically adding the water back to the orange juice. And there we go. That's one of the utilizations, how you use the vacuum type of process. Nice, to doing some nice orange juice. That was the beginning. One application, one of the that applications was the beginning. start. The, the, and then there was an application, another application that, that we started working with was actually with the 
MIT. Uh, the MIT was, had a very high technology base on vacuum, and we started to work with them in terms of technology transfer. Uh, there was a great collaboration between the US and Japan. Uh, and we've long been working with them a long time ago. This yeah. is it's, yeah, it's in 1950s. That's how we started so collaboration. So this is the cutting edge of solid state battery? This is the most advanced solid stage battery stuff happening uh, right now? Uh, I would say so, uh, in terms of uh, high volume manufacturing and for solid state battery, that you are able to do the whole process under vacuum conditions and having all the uh, layers being deposited at once. And what is this? This is a different application um, that instead of having in a, a small form factor, you could have a big panel. Imagine that you have a big piece of glass that you would go vertically through all the different chambers and you're depositing from the sides. You can deposit on both sides of the glass as it passed through the equipment. And that one there? Uh, yeah, so uh, another way is instead of having vertically, the panel would go horizontally. And it, instead of having the both sides being deposited, you only want more interest in depositing only one side of the glass. So UVAC is uh, enabling stuff that's in like millions or billions of things, right? That is correct. It's big. You're big, yes. doing big quantities and stuff. Yes, enabling. that is correct. Yes. Yeah, we, we make the equipment that's enabling the process that is used today for all the devices in the manuf that's manufactured in the semiconductor application. All the monitors and the TVs that you have in your houses today, there are very great chance that they pass through our equipment because all the deposit that the films are deposited, it's using the Alvac technology. Does that mean it passed through Japan or it passed through, you have your machines all over the world? We have all over the world, yeah, we have, uh, a company is about 6,500 people. We have offices in US, Europe, Japan, China, Taiwan, Korea, India, Malaysia, just to mention a few of them. And we are in a variety of applications. Uh, in and you by far like the world leader in vacuum and all this stuff? We would like to say so. Uh, as you can see, the name of the company is Alvac, which stands for Ultimate Vacuum. That's how we keep the core technology as the base and how do we expand from the vacuum that's used in many different process that could benefit from that environment. What do you uh, sacrifice with the organic there? Well, the sacrificial layer is uh, it's a nomenclature that you use when before you have this, this layer that is attached at the bottom of the substrate, and, but you needed to do the patterning. So that's used as a sacrificial layer so you can do the patterning. So we just remove the layer in a very precise, smooth way. Uh, and this is another type of equipment that we manufacture. We manufacture, as a matter of fact, here in the US. It's, uh, we call them viral because it's a dry etching. So there's no use of chemicals, dry, uh, wet chemicals that is used. So it's a dry process. So it's good for the environment. That's how we call it viral. And we also make in the US the etching tools that can be used for uh, microfluidics. In this case, uh, that we have an example here that is based on a glass etching, which is a very difficult material to, to etch, but we were able to develop a technology, again, that is under vacuum and can produce these great results. So how is it for you to be here at the IDTech Show? Is a lot very, of yeah, we, people we, to network with? Yeah, we have been uh, attending this show yes. for many years and we've seen how the industry has evolved. Uh, we like to be part of the show because we see all the new applications, the people that are coming with uh, new usages of the devices, of the sensors. Uh, and everything starts with an equipment that we make. And in this show, we can see how we come from the initial device to the end application, so we are very connected with our customers as well.